Risk System from New Industries, who kindly supplied me with a copy of the game, gets so much right. The in-game visuals look great, the overall presentation is slick and professional, it's got enough personality to make it stand out from the crowd, and its core mechanic adds a successful twist to classic shmup gameplay that's fun to play around with and, once you're used to it, can really be quite addictive. And that's fortunate because it really does need to be addictive given how many frustrations the game throws in alongside all these other positives. Now the first thing you're going to notice when you start Risk System is that in a rather bold departure for a shoot em up, in Risk System there is no shoot button. Instead, whenever you position yourself directly in front of an enemy, your ship will automatically fire and stop when you face empty space. Your job is instead to focus on avoiding the bullets and lasers that come your way using both regular dodging skills and high and low barrel rolls which use the B and Y buttons. Risk System's most defining mechanic, however, is a literal risk system which sees you charge a special weapon by getting close to enemy bullets and either grazing them as they slip by or using your barrel roll to leap out of danger at the last possible second. Once this risk meter is charged, you can then hit A to unleash an impressive looking and more importantly devastating special attack that damages everything on screen and gives you a moment of invincibility, although to shots only, enemy ships can crucially still do damage. Further to this, when you're in close proximity to an enemy bullet, your regular auto fire will be stronger and enemies killed using this stronger fire will drop health pickups, which your ship will vacuum up as they pass. Something a bit weird, and to be honest something that feels slightly misjudged, is that these health pickups only come along during the main stages, not during boss fights. However, main stages are, for the most part, a lot easier than bosses. I don't quite get why it's been done this way, it really feels like you should maybe get a chance to replenish some health at about the midway stage of most boss fights, but you don't. Overall though, the game has a very interesting system which is designed very well and, as mentioned, gives the gameplay a very addictive feeling as you constantly try to balance and judge the risks of diving headlong into the fray and using your special to escape, versus those of staying out of trouble but then having no last minute safety net if you do find yourself cornered. It's also a system that meshes very smartly with the game's scoring system, which sees you increase a multiplier by collecting excess health pickups. This cleverly encourages both safe and flawless play to make sure your health is always full, but also risky play to make sure you're generating those power-ups. Again, it can be pretty addictive once you get into it, and even more so when accompanied by the game's rank mechanic, which sees you scored on a school-style ABC scale at the end of each stage, with better ranks leading to changes in the game's story and ending. So on paper, these systems really have a lot going for them. Unfortunately, the execution leaves a little to be desired. Now if you're like me and you love nothing more than a good graze mechanic, you may be wondering what could possibly go wrong, this sounds great. However, I think it's actually those who do love graze mechanics who may come away most disappointed here, and there are two main reasons. One is that most ghastly of words to the ears of a shmup fan, inertia. Your ship is just so horribly slow to kick into gear, and honestly it just staggers me that this is still a thing. I've seen countless people complain about inertia in shmups, and to the best of my recall, I don't think I've ever seen anyone say anything good about it, and yet it continually reappears, and I just have no idea why. So yeah, it is present here, and it's every bit annoying as annoying as it always is. The second issue is a very vague sense of which parts of enemy attacks can damage you. There are a lot of wide laser beams or bouncing lightning balls, and many of them have this hazy edge to them that makes it very difficult to tell where their hitbox and yours are going to interact. Now that would always be an issue in a shmup, but in one so reliant on grazing it's an even bigger issue. Fortunately, in this case, things are mitigated a bit by the type of patterns you'll be facing. Instead of intricate Saivariar-style interlacing grids that require pinpoint precision, here the patterns tend to have an almost puzzle-like aspect to them, where you basically focus on working out how to use them to trigger a special weapon shot at certain times to then dodge out of trouble. But there are times, most notably the Stage 4 boss, 
where this imprecision can go from creating a bit of frustration to being genuinely anger inducing. And while the stage 4 boss is the worst offender, several of the bosses have this effect. Their attacks are not designed to be dodgeable when you first see them. Instead you die, learn their pattern, die, learn their next pattern, die and so on in the sort of attritional style that R-Type Final 2 recently used to just such ill effect. Or at least that is the idea, I won't show them here but the final boss of the standard game left me genuinely unsure what I was actually supposed to be doing to the extent that I had to go and look up a playthrough, something I don't think I have ever had to do for a shmup before just to see what you're meant to do. And by the way, when I did find out, it wasn't with a cry of, aha, that's clever. It was with a groan of, what? How would I be expected to know that? And of course, all this leads to the usual secondary issue that once you have learned these patterns, a lot of them often become too easy on repeat plays. Perhaps the most damning result of all this can be illustrated through my experience with the last boss of the normal game. I spent about an hour repeatedly facing off against this boss and at the time of writing, despite there being several people on the leaderboards, I'm currently the only person to have defeated it. And yet, when I did finally land that killer blow, I did not feel any sense of triumph or satisfaction. I just thought, thank god that's over, I never want to have to do that again. And this is a massive shame because the main stages can be a lot of fun and absolutely do encourage replaying for all the right reasons. So it's such a shame to have these fun, frantic, replayable stages so often culminate in these ugly difficulty spikes that torpedo any sense of flow. Now visually, I feel this is a game where footage doesn't do it justice. It does look good in videos and trailers, but when playing it just feels like such a fitting art style for the action, and the layered backgrounds really brilliantly use repeated objects to give a sense of depth, while the enemy ship sprites display a variety of curious forms and match perfectly with the backdrops. There's also a lot of use of background elements then appearing in the foreground as actual enemies, or the reverse with bosses dodging back to unleash laser attacks from a distance. The colour work is also excellent, and while any one element or single screenshot may seem simple in isolation, the overall effect when it's all moving and you're focused on your own craft is thoroughly impressive and perfectly suited to this style of game. Music and sound effects are less standout, although there are voiced dialogues between boxed out talking heads to advance the story, and these too add to the overall polished impression you'll get from the game as a whole. These talking heads, by the way, belong to both your own pilot and her former buddies who have been corrupted by some sort of parasite and have to be defeated one by one to progress. There are, however, a few surprising missteps given how polished and professional things do feel. For a start, there's no button mapping, something especially frustrating because I would have really liked to change the mapping for the barrel rolls as even after several hours play I'm still not quite used to the standard setup. There's also no difficulty setting and I feel the option to drop the game to easy and be given 5 instead of 3 rechargeable life bars would have made the later game frustrations a lot more palatable. On the other hand, there are online leaderboards for not just your highest score but also your highest multiplier achieved and quickest boss takedown times for the whole game and for each stage. There's also a pilot profile section which sees redacted sections revealed as you make better progress and some welcome options like being able to turn the screen shake off and skip the talking head cutscenes. There's also arguably the best and most fun part of the game, namely a challenge tower called the Trophium that unlocks only after you've beaten the main game. This gives you 90 seconds to take down as many enemies as you can, with quicker takedowns and less damage granting you time extends and the chance to rise higher up the challenge tower. This is a really fun mode and it's a shame that many players probably aren't going to get to experience it. They are also highly unlikely to get to experience the 6th stage since that is locked behind achieving an A rank on every previous stage something that, while eminently achievable on the first few stages, 
is just far too frustrating to attempt later on and to be honest I'm probably not even going to try for it. So as I said at the top Risk System has a lot going for it in terms of visuals, overall presentation and the concept of the core mechanics it looks like a nailed on success. Unfortunately that core concept is not pulled off in a way that I think certainly arcade shmup players are going to appreciate very much. But despite its flaws, when you do get into the slightly awkward swing of things, it can be thoroughly addictive and for periods very, very fun. It's a shame those periods are all too often broken up by frustrating boss encounters, but overall it's still a game I'd recommend checking out for people looking to try something a bit different, and if you do get it I would really recommend making the effort to beat it so you can unlock arguably the game's best feature, the trophy. I'd give Risk System a 7 out of 10 and I feel like it's one that could very well be looked upon a lot more favourably if it does click for you. So let me know your thoughts if you get it or if you've played it on Steam and thanks very much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.